Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. It's good to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. I can't wait to dive into all of the great stuff that we have for you today. We have a ton of data uh, and some really good tips and tricks to get us started. We have a great hour planned for everybody. So welcome to everyone. I see tons of folks trickling onto the call. So for those of you who have already joined, uh, we'll get started in just a second. I just wanna give other folks just a chance to hop on. And as more people continue to join, I do wanna make sure that we are able to use the GoToWebinar question box feature. It's over there to the side within the GoToWebinar panel. And the reason I wanna have us use that is because that's essentially going to be our chat feature for today. So that'll be how you'll ask us questions. That'll be part of the Q&A. We'll be able to go through and address any questions that you have. So it'll function a little bit like a chat feature. Uh, you won't be able to talk with other attendees, but that is how you'll be able to put in your questions and we'll be able to get to them. So to get us all started today and familiar, I'd love for you to type into that question box, go ahead and find it, say hello to us, let us know where you're calling in from today. One of my favorite things about these webinars is getting to see where everybody is from because it's just a neat opportunity to connect people from all over the country, all corners of the world, and we're all here for that one common goal to improve our marketing. So I'll call out some of the responses as they come in, but I just want to see who we have on the call today. Where are you from? Uh, where are you working out of? Let me know. So for example, I am from Louisiana. I'm based out of North Louisiana. I'm born and raised here. So go ahead, find that question box. Let me know where you're from. Let's take a look at what we've got today. All right, I see some Florida folks. Hello, Wisconsin, more Wisconsin people. PA, Austin, Texas, love having a next door neighbor. Dallas, even more next door, great to have you. Canada, we love having our Canadian friends here. Ohio, New Jersey, so many people we have. Kansas. I see some Boston, I see New York, some more East Coast, I see New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Missouri, wonderful. I feel like I could go through the whole alphabet song with everybody. Wonderful. Oh, there's someone from South Louisiana. Welcome. This might be my first. I'm really excited. Thank you so much for being here. Excited to have you on here. Uh, hello from Longview, Texas, another neighbor. Awesome, LA, fantastic. It is so awesome, tons of people. Keep typing in, find that question box, get a little bit of practice and let us know where you're calling in from. So I would love to sit here and call through everybody and let's just do shout outs, but we got a lot of stuff to cover. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm gonna kick us off today with a couple of housekeeping items. So for everyone that's on the call, note that it will be recorded. So don't worry about taking notes or anything like that. You don't have to feverishly catch every word I say, especially because I talk really quickly. Uh, we're going to be sending a copy of the slides and the recording to your inbox later on. So it'll be there for you. And note that all of our recordings are available online. So you can easily find any of these on WordStream or Local IQ YouTube channels. Just navigate to YouTube, type in Local IQ or WordStream, click on one of our channels, and then you'll be able to see all of our past webinar recordings right there. If you wanna catch up on any of our old ones or view this one again, you can do that later on. Also, so again, the reason why I have you practice in the question box, I wanna know where everyone's from but also I want you to feel comfortable typing your questions throughout the webinar. That again is going to act like our chat feature. You won't be able to talk to other participants, but that's where you'll be able to put in your questions and we'll be able to get to those towards the end of the webinar. So if you've attended any of our past webinars, you know our Q&A sessions are a really unique experience. They're a lot of fun. So be sure to have your questions in there so that we can get to them at the end. All right, before we go any further, I want to get us all on the same page of who Local IQ is. We may be coming to this from a couple of different places and a couple of different understandings of Local IQ. So some of you might already be working with us, and that's awesome. We're happy to have you here. And then some of you might be totally new, 
and that's fine too. And then others might be familiar with us through our thought leadership brand, WordStream by Local IQ. So how does it all fit together? Well, Local IQ is a fully integrated growth marketing platform, and it marries innovative tech that you can't find anywhere else with unparalleled expertise and service to give your business what it needs to thrive and prosper. So how exactly do we do that? Well, technology is at our core. Our platform runs on optimization technology and AI, informed by data from over a million local IQ campaigns. So you truly can't find this information anywhere else. And we've got all the tools that you need all in one place. We give you the tools at your fingertips to make the daily task of marketing faster. This puts time back into your day so you can focus on managing your business, managing your teams, rather than focusing on uh, all of the attention that marketing requires. And then finally, we have been at this for over 15 years, which if you think about the age of digital marketing, it's really not that much older than that. So we've been through it all. We've been through the ups, downs, shifts in the landscapes, changes in the platforms, and we're here to tell the story to the benefit of your business. So one more thing that we're really proud of is that we are a premier partner with all major advertising platforms. And this is not something that's just granted to any marketing platform out there. They don't just hand these badges out. It's really only given to businesses that display a clear campaign success for their customers. They display thought leadership within the field and meet a really rigorous set of requirements for each one of those platforms. So we're really proud of that. All right, and then a little bit about me. I'll be your webinar host and facilitator today. My name is Katie. And here at Local IQ, I work across a ton of different teams on digital marketing for all of our customers. And so for the last 10 plus years in one capacity or another, I've been equipping sales teams, agencies, individual business owners with whatever it is that they need to succeed. And if you missed the first part where you couldn't tell by my accent, I am in the Southern US in Louisiana, but unlike our friend who's joining from Acadiana, I'm not in the fun part. I'm in North Louisiana. I'm about five hours north of New Orleans, um, but I'm still excited to be here. still love being here and love being here with you guys today. All right, before we dive in, the last couple of things I want to mention are around some really common questions that we get here. And that's where can we learn more about the topics that we're going to cover here? It's going to fly by. Like I said, we have a lot of information, a lot of data, and I'm going to try to go as slowly as I can to let you absorb it. But if you ever feel like you maybe need to take some more time to sit with any of the topics that we cover, you can of course go listen to the webinar recording. But I also highly recommend that you navigate to Local IQ or WordStream websites. We cover everything in these webinars in depth over there through various blog posts or guides. Uh, and we do the same thing through our social media. So be sure to follow us there. We share out notifications for future events. So if you wanna join more webinars like this in the future, definitely be sure to follow us and turn on your post notifications. And then we also share out really good information and news like platform updates, interesting articles, uh, and other bits of information that advertisers should probably be aware of if you're in this space. So you can find Local IQ on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, X, and YouTube. And then you can find WordStream on LinkedIn, X, Facebook, and YouTube. All right. If you have attended any of our past webinars, you know that I love to keep listeners on their toes around here. So let's get warmed up on our topic today. I'm gonna to hit you with a quick pop quiz. I want you to type into that question box and let me know what are your plans to either increase, decrease, or maintain your marketing budget in 2025? So we're about to show you the results of what hundreds of other businesses said, but I'd really love to get a pulse from this group that we have here today to know what are your plans? If you are gonna increase your budget next year, what are, what are the motivations for that? What's leading to that decision? Uh, and if you're going to maybe decrease your budget, what things are prompting that line of thinking? Or if you, you plan on maintaining your budget, what, what is spurring that? What are the factors that are driving that thought? So let us know in the question box. I'll call out some of the responses right here. All right, I see some increase. That's great, that's great. Some maintains, a couple of maintains. We, we hear a lot about um, business owners wanting to maintain just because 
maybe they're at capacity for what they can handle or uncertainty with what's going to happen the next year. I'd love to know your thoughts, why, why you are choosing to maintain. Um, I see some increases, depends on the potential increase of revenue. Is that the truth? It always depends on what that revenue is going to look like. Uh, we're going to see some increases in marketing budgets, pushing the business to a marketing led org, mostly maintaining small increases. We're going to increase, increase. This is really exciting. So for those folks who are looking to increase, uh, we're going to talk about what other business owners are looking to increase in as well. It's really important to know what other businesses are doing, what other businesses in your industry are doing so that you can be there as well. Um, I see some more maintaining, some decreasing, slight increase. Okay, this is great. Keep putting some information in there. This is wonderful. We see some increases because people want to get better at targeting. I love it. Yes, there's a lot of opportunity out there. Whether you're going to increase, decrease, or maintain, we've got some really good information and direction that can help you either make that decision or make the next steps following that decision. So I wish that I could call out everybody. I see a ton of answers coming through. Um, but what you probably noticed is that there were a lot of the same answers, but some of them were slightly different because of the reason that they gave the answer. And that's because each business is different. And so every answer is gonna be a little bit different. And so this means that it's gonna be something specific for your teams, your bandwidth, your resources. So I would just encourage you as we walk through the topic today, think about how the data could apply to what you're planning to do. Maybe we need to take a, a different approach or maybe look at a couple of different solutions. But at the end of the day, everyone's going to have a different experience. And even though we all have the same uh, goal in mind, we may get there a different way. All right, so here's the lay of the land for the next few minutes. We're going to talk about who is the SMB right now. When you do any sort of survey, you want to get that demographic data. So we're going to take a look at the who, what, and where of who replied to this survey. And then we're going to dig into the five big results with our survey. And then you'll see that little light bulb right there. We've got some really good tips on what to do with that data. Sometimes the numbers are a little overwhelming and trying to figure out how to apply that to real life is sort of far off. We're gonna help with that a little bit. And then we'll get into our thought starters and then our live Q&A where you can put your questions into the question box and we'll be able to address them. All right, let's take a look at the participants from this is our first ever SMB survey. So this was our first time sending out a survey trying to get a pulse of what the small business environment was like. And we were overwhelmed. We had 730 plus businesses respond to this survey. So I think we have more than enough data to be able to direct some decisions and um, make some decisions for next year. So it was really exciting to have such a wide range of survey respondents. And we feel like it's going to truly reflect the small business landscape. And so businesses were spread out across industries, location, and different sizes. So let's take a look. Let's build a profile of who, who responded, who's out there. First up, mostly U.S. and Canada. You can see 74% of our respondents came from those two places. And there's a little bit of slivers from various other places, but the, the most of the data and most of the outlooks are going to be coming from those two countries. Next up, like I said, we had a wide array of industries that we got a response from, which was amazing. But there were a couple that sort of took the lead. The top three were healthcare, business services, and retail. So you can take a second and look at that chart and see where your business fell in that ranking. And I would say business services is a really wide, um, I guess, category for different businesses. So there's a ton of different types of businesses that could fit into that category and your business might be one of them. But you can see we had arts and entertainment, industrial and commercial, home services and home improvement. We usually get a really good amount of those. So it was really interesting. We liked seeing healthcare and retail um, being so participant in the survey and being able to get some data from those groups. Next up, we asked, how many full-time employees does your business have? Everyone has a different definition for what a small business is or 
what um, what business means for them. So for these groups, mostly they had two to 10 or 11 to 50 employees. And that can be a big gap. Two to 50 employees is a pretty significant gap. Your business is gonna look very different based on whether you have two or up to 50 employees. So we went ahead and dug a little deeper into that question. And how many full-time marketing employees are you looking at? And the majority of people said they had one to five employees that were dedicated full-time to marketing. The rest of the respondents said maybe more than five or they didn't have anyone dedicated at all to full-time. Maybe they had someone who was partially dedicated to marketing. So someone was wearing a couple of different hats or marketing was just something that was on the back burner and we're just trying to get through our day. And then our next thought was, how much time does each business spend on marketing per week? And we were excited to see it's about one to five hours per week that most businesses are spending on marketing. And again, that's distributed amongst those full-time employees or those people wearing multiple hats. So let's look at what that actually means for our survey results. So we took that data. Here's a, a slice of what a business looks like. Here's our profile of an SMB. And so instead of having to sift through the rest of the results, let's look at a summary of these five big survey results. And then we'll dig into the data that got us to those. And then we'll figure out what we can do to help inform your 2025 planning. All right, first up, small businesses are missing key opportunities. And they're missing these opportunities to reach new customers. And they're doing it in three main areas. Data shows that they're missing it on search marketing and SEO. They're missing opportunities in brand awareness, and they're missing opportunities in tracking and converting site visitors. So if any of these resonate with you, or maybe you're thinking that these are areas where you need to look at the opportunity, let's go ahead and take a deeper look. So how do we know where these businesses were missing key opportunities? It's based on really what we're not seeing, so 60% of small businesses aren't investing in search advertising and 61% aren't investing in SEO. So this means that most businesses are missing out on connecting with and converting potential customers who are out there actively looking and searching for businesses on key sites like Google. And so if you're not there, if you're not working on your search ads or you haven't invested in SEO for your site, then you're not going to show up when most people are going to look. And so just to level set with everybody, when I say search marketing, what I mean is running paid search ads on top of search engines. Like I said, Google, Bing, Yelp, it's when you wanna show up for searches. And like I said, you're missing out on a key opportunity because 70% of people use search engines when you're looking to make a purchase. Uh, and I'm honestly surprised that statistic isn't higher because I think I'm 100% I go to a search engine before I make any kind of purchase. And so a large percentage of those people are specifically searching for a local product or service. So increasing visibility and rankings in search results is one of the most efficient ways to scale up your revenue online. And that's because it drives really quick results. It helps your business rank on search engines. It drives conversions or people who are gonna become your customers. And then it, it can help you collect data for reporting and analytics. So you can see what's working, what's resonating with customers, maybe what you need to do more of, less of. But just word of caution, because Google's algorithm is constantly changing, that means that they are taking steps daily to make search results more relevant for users. So paid search and SEO are critical. That's why they're, they kind of go hand in hand. So what constitutes an effective SEO strategy changes frequently, just like what constitutes a, a high performing Google search ad is going to change based on a lot of factors. SEO is the same way. So we would really encourage you to dig into SEO a little bit more, maybe look at some third parties who can help you address that. Additionally, the majority of small businesses are missing out on brand awareness tactics. And this includes things like display advertising, online listings, reputation management. These channels are what you can go to to help get found across the web. 
and they're what's going to influence purchase behavior, especially in the case of something like reputation management and listings. These often go hand in hand because you see a listing, it usually has reviews attached to it, or it usually has some sort of star rating, which ties into your reputation management. And so those things um, usually go together and should be addressed together. But a lot of the businesses are not utilizing those tools. So that's a wide open opportunity for you in 2025. So this is the first of our bright idea slides. So anytime you see that light bulb, that just means we have some good tips, tricks, or in insights that we wanted to share. So first up is a little bit of a deeper look at brand awareness. This is sort of an umbrella term we saw a second ago that there was this gap in brand awareness solutions for most small businesses. And the reason that this is an issue is because it points to that business's ability to be able to be in front of people when they're ready to make a decision. If you're not there when they're ready to purchase, then they're not going to know that you exist. So 27% of people are searching for a business after seeing a display ad. These just speak to the power of brand awareness. 82% of people click on a search result from brands that they're familiar with. So if they already know you, they're much more likely to go ahead and click on your on search results where they see you. And then 59% of lift and conversions, when people did search for, um, that was something that was related to a display ad. So that means that we see a greater chance of turning into a customer when someone sees a display ad for your business, they're going to then go and search for your business and they have a much greater chance of converting. So all of this points to the strategy of using marketing activities that ensure your business is top of mind with consumers. And so brand awareness can include a lot of different things. It can include free things like word of mouth, or staying active on social media. So maybe you're um, participating with your community and comments, or you're posting a lot. That's all really, really important. But then you can also put forth paid efforts like social media ads or display or retargeting ads. So a great piece of brand awareness is gonna be your local listings. We talked about reputation management and listings a second ago. So if you think, Think about the Google business profile. If you search for a business, it'll usually show up to the side and it'll have a map showing the location. And then it allows you as the business owner to input a ton of information, including business hours, lets you link reviews, answer questions. And so it's this really good piece of brand awareness that can give you some SEO bump while you're at it. So as people are searching, not only are they going to get the information that they, that they need, but you're going to show up on the side, a little more visible. And so that's how it all kind of ties together. All right, next up is you want to be able to track and convert your website visitors. So a lot of small businesses are missing out on the ability to do that. So things like call tracking or website chat, there's even free call tracking and web chat tools available that can help you with lowering your budget. So things like Meta's Pixel for Facebook or Google has something similar, the, the Google Tag Manager. Uh, Local IQ uses tracking codes on our, our campaign and it allows you to be able to see what's working so you can improve when people see your ad. You can know when they're engaging. So you're not using up your budget when people aren't searching for your business. Uh, you can go and retarget former visitors. It really gives you a lot of insights and all of that data is really important for making future decisions. So that the good news is there's just a lot of opportunity and a lot of different ways to do this. So you may be competing against a larger business in some scenarios but you're less likely to have competition from local businesses who offer similar services. So being able to use this information allows you to position yourself a little better online. All right, our next big takeaway is around AI. I don't think you can have any sort of trends or planning conversation without talking about AI. And so this one is no different. AI is pretty much commonplace now and small businesses are taking advantage. You can see here that they are using AI and they are using it to assist with an array of marketing tactics. Things like content ideation, automation, design, the sky's the limit. 
And while AI is really good for these marketing activities, it can be easy to become too complacent and maybe you let AI take control a little too much. So that's when you start seeing things like errors, uh, there's gonna be a loss of trust. AI doesn't always sound like a person when it uh, outputs information, or maybe it doesn't understand uh, context or various variables for your business. So it's not gonna produce something that uh, makes the most sense for your business. So it's important to keep a close eye on any of your AI outputs and you wanna monitor the results to ensure that AI is working for you and not against you. So one of the ways that you can do that, this is a strategy that we recommend. You may be tempted to go in and use AI for a bunch of different things, but let's take a look for a second at what are some ways not to use AI for marketing and then ways that you can use AI for marketing. So marketing strategy recommendation. You may be tempted to ask an AI tool for the best ways to promote your business. But ultimately, the best marketing strategies for your business are going to depend on your unique goals and challenges, as well as the resources that you have. We talked about it earlier. Everyone was going to increase or decrease their budget. But everyone had different reasons because each of you know your business so well. And that's something that AI can't fully know or take into account. Instead, use it to generate copy for marketing assets once you've created your strategy. That's a much better way. You can check the output, you can still maintain control, but it makes life a little easier and a little more efficient. Next, you can or don't organize your Google Ads account structure using AI. That's not a way that you want to use it. So while you can use AI to help with headline and description writing for your Google Ads, you want to leave the strategic stuff up to the pros or something that you can oversee yourself. So the way that you set up your Google Ads campaigns is going to be organized directly on the impact of how relevant the ads are to their keywords. And this has a direct impact on your cost per click, which then directly impacts your ROI. So you can see sort of the domino effect here. So if you are not organizing your account structure correctly, then you're not gonna get the ROI that you need. And so while AI tools can provide really helpful suggestions, I hate starting from scratch on anything, so I love a helpful suggestion, but AI is not going to know what other campaigns you have running or what your business objectives are or how big your account or budget is. So that's why we would uh, advise you to sort of stay away from using AI for something like that. Instead, you could use it for recommending marketing tools that can help make the task of building the campaigns easier. That's a much better alternative. Again, you have the ability to have oversight and control um, and control those variables. All right, for a, a way not to use AI, we do not advise keyword research. So one way you should not use AI for marketing is to do keyword research because many AI tools like ChatGPT are not real-time platforms. So they have limited data up until a certain year. For ChatGPT, it's about 2021. So while many AI tools can provide really, again, helpful starting points, or they can generate some potential ideas, the data is going to be unreliable. Again, you want to be able to double check and oversee what's happening. However, it is a good idea for content ideation. So if you're looking for ideas for a blog post or a guide or a white paper, for any of your content marketing efforts, this is a really good place to go. You can ask AI to, to, to give you post ideas based on specific topics or some existing content that you have that performed really well. You can use it to research on a specific topic, curate top articles on a topic, or maybe just have it simplify a really complex concept so that then you can um, put that forth for your readers and get some users engaged. Next up, what you don't want to use it for is web development. AI can do things like it can create code, maybe, for example, for like an ROI calculator, or it can output some other coding for your site for something that you want to incorporate. But let me stress that site performance is really complex. There are so many considerations when you're looking at your website, like whether it will impact page speed or site security, or maybe some other ranking factor. 
So how you use AI for web development in terms of the brand feel or collecting lead information, you really don't want to use AI for that kind of stuff. Instead, use it more for shortcuts. Uh, if you're trying to work out something like a formula in Excel, this is where AI gets really helpful with your reporting and your analytics. So things like data processing and analysis can be made much, much faster by asking AI for spreadsheet formulas. But again, be wary of using AI to fully assist with reporting and analytics. That's something that's really important and you wanna make sure that you can be involved and control what's happening. So many AI tools, again, like ChatGPT, can analyze data, but the current functionality behind this is very limited. For as far as AI has come, it is still very new. So just like the best marketing strategies are going to vary from business to business, the right KPIs and goals will depend on your unique situation. So the best way to identify trends, patterns, insights in your data is to really come up with your own consistent reporting routine. If you are consistently looking at the information, you'll begin to see these things. And then if you're using tools like uh, Looker Studio or Analytics for Google Ads, or if you are working with local IQ or using a third party, um, things like our customer center, it breaks down reporting into holistic dashboards and then lets you understand how your marketing is working. Those are going to be the better uses. So however, though, AI is still really good for generating customer surveys. Or maybe you have a chat bot on your site and you want to include some prompts and answer ideas to engage people while they're on your site. Uh, but we wouldn't recommend it for something like a competitor analysis. Most AI tools are simply just aggregators of information. So they're just taking a bunch of text data from across the web. So again, it doesn't have context. So it may spit out some good information about your competitors. You are much better off running the analysis yourself using some sort of like real-time platform or app. Uh, we actually have a free SWOT analysis template that you can run your own analysis. And then again, you can you understand your business, you understand your industry, and you can have a much better grasp of the information that's going to be coming from that. And with AI being so prevalent, you don't always have to utilize AI within uh, or outside of an existing system or platform, like going to ChatGPT to get a formula. You can use AI within existing systems because it is in being infused across the board. So Google and Facebook both have their own forms of AI within their campaign platforms. Or if you're working with a partner like Local IQ, we build AI into our solutions and our campaign execution. So where it really gets fun and neat is when you see it used in this way, when it's layered on top of things that already exist. So for example, this is an example of Dash. This is AI technology that Local IQ built into our customer center platform. And it transcribes phone calls, prioritizes leads, allows for SMS texting. And so it gives you the insight, but you still maintain that control and you can still trust the information that it's giving you. So face, uh, Google will, you'll see this through things like their smart bidding or performance max. For Facebook, uh, they use AI for things like ad creation or automated insight. Uh, in addition to Dash, Local IQ uses it within our social ads that have AI uh, and then channel level optimization technology that's part of multiple solutions. So this is one way that's really uh, fun to see how AI is growing and improving efficiency for not just uh, companies, but also business owners like yourselves. All right, after a few years of a challenging economy, it is heartening to see that small businesses are planning to increase or retain their marketing budget, which is what we saw in our pop quiz question. A lot of you, most of you were planning to increase your budget, even if it was just slightly. So small businesses have been through the ringer and you can probably attest to that. So we'd love to see that you guys are thriving and planning to continue standing out from the local competition with your marketing budgets. So despite economic challenges, 49% of small businesses are planning to increase their marketing budget next year. So if you answered to that pop quiz that you were increasing your budget, you're not alone. 
the majority are increasing their budgets and they're doing so to drive more leads and sales. So this makes sense as many marketing strategies built around lead acquisition require budget. And if you're getting a good return on your investment, it's easy to scale. So in other words, you can typically drive more leads by spending more. So for those decreasing their budgets, we had some of those uh, answers earlier today too. The majority, 56%, are going to be decreasing because of the economy. We talked about uncertainty of what the next year holds. This is understandable. This uh, coming after record inflation, economic uncertainty following COVID, it is understandable how a lot of businesses are feeling um, a little shaky about what the economy is going to do, so they just want to decrease what they're spending on their marketing. And of the 49% of SMBs that were looking to increase their budget next year, social takes two top spots in the top five of where they're planning to put that investment. So a lot of people said that they were uh, increasing their budget to get more leads. And they're going to be trying to do that through social and social media marketing. They're the number one and number five where business owners plan to invest. So social media ads are going to be um, look like your paid budget toward ads on Facebook uh, and Instagram. This is either in stories or the main feed. Social media marketing is a lot of that reputation management and maintaining your social network through organic posts. So then we have content marketing tying for the number one spot, which makes sense that video marketing and social media marketing will be in the top as well, because those kind of go hand in hand. That is your content. So business owners are investing in creation of video and other content they can share online, either via their own YouTube channels or organically through social networks like Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. And then most SMBs are planning to keep their investments roughly the same for many tactics. That includes things like reputation management, website chat, online listings, uh, and some other solutions. And then 16% plan to invest less in traditional in 2025. So if you are aiming to drive exceptional results from digital marketing, it's no uh, surprise that Facebook is the place that's highly likely to play a pivotal role in those plans. That's why the majority of survey respondents came in with social towards the top. Facebook is an advertising powerhouse. It attracts more than 3 billion with a B monthly active users and research suggests that Facebook often delivers the highest ROI among all social media platforms. So here's some tips on how to get the most out of Facebook. Social algorithms, including Facebook, they consider recency as a ranking factor, meaning if your post is the freshest post when your audience is most active, more people are likely to see it. So not only should you be posting with some sort of regularity, but the timing of when you post matters too. So you can see there we have examples of the best times each day to post on Facebook. Because when you're posting at the right time, more people will see the post early on. Then if they like and engage with the post, it'll be placed up front for more people. So it's this fun, vicious little cycle. So for Facebook, the best days to post are going to be Monday through Thursday, but overall Monday and Tuesday at 10 is the sweet spot. And then I know all of this timing and regular posting can get really overwhelming. So we suggest starting a content calendar this is where you can plan out your post for the month based on holidays or seasonality or maybe some other theme with your business. And we have a free template. It takes you through each month. We'll do it again for 2025. We note the specific holidays and it'll allow you to be able to take like a bird's eye view of your month and start um, scheduling out your post. SEO is another one of the light bulb moments for us here. So it's one of the best ways to skyrocket your online presence. We talked about it a little bit earlier. We've mentioned it a few times. Uh, your business can get found in more online searches and people will discover why your brand is worth following on socials like Facebook. So that's why they kind of go together. So much like the prep work required for posting, you are going to want to do some cleanup or ongoing management of your website before your social can be as effective. So things like fixing and redirecting any old and broken website pages, 
Maybe you need to identify the right SEO keywords to incorporate into your web content. Optimize your images. So make sure that you are using the correct sizes to fit the space uh, or compressing the image. And then be sure to link to other web pages and blog content throughout your website. All of that will have a huge impact on being able to show up on, so on search and social. And then while you're at it, let's go ahead and just talk about your campaign objectives on Facebook, which really ties into how strategic you're going to get with your audience. So you can use campaign objectives to target various Facebook audiences because of the different goal. So based on what you're wanting to do, we have suggestions on when to use it. There's six different Facebook campaign objectives that are offered, and they go from awareness all the way down to sales. You can see awareness is exactly what it sounds like. It's getting as many people as possible to see your ad. So when you're setting up this Facebook ad, it's really good if you're trying to break into a new market or maybe you have something new that you're trying to promote. Let's say maybe engagement is something that you need. Engagement is gonna be all about people liking, sharing, or commenting with whatever content you're putting out there. So if you want to really increase your organic visibility or maybe increase excitement about an event or some sort of engagement, this is a really good objective for that. Everyone's favorite is leads because everyone wants more leads. Everyone wants more business. So the leads objective is it's either going to be on Facebook or on your website. It's really good if you are looking for signups or registrations or you're just trying to generate inquiries from potential customers. So each campaign objective impacts how Facebook serves your ad. So you can test out a few. You don't have to do them all. We don't recommend doing them all. Maybe just A-B test a couple of different options, see what performs the best, and see one which serves your ad most efficiently and is gonna be the best for your business. All right. Next up, many small businesses have little to no marketing budget. So very few, just 5% of SMBs have no marketing budget at all. But we were pretty shocked to see that 33% have a budget under $1,000 a month. So we can take that to mean that every dollar counts, which is something that we know from our business. We hear it from our customers all the time, which is why we take reporting and performance so seriously. So it is very important for smaller businesses to focus their budget on what's going to be the most effective tactic for lead generation and customer acquisition. So now if we take that knowledge that the majority of SMBs have little to no marketing budget, and then we go back and consider the employee information that we looked at earlier. So we look at the number of full-time employees along with how much time the business spends on marketing per week, and then the number of marketing employees, we can see a couple of things. So here we see the majority, about 53% of businesses surveyed, spend between one to 10 hours per week on marketing. So this rate was higher for small businesses with 10 or fewer employees, but it was lower for those with 50 or more employees. And that's because businesses with fewer employees and smaller marketing budget tend to have fewer or no employees dedicated solely to marketing and their day-to-day -day schedules are going to be spread across a range of activities that may include marketing. So I'm sure there's a ton of you who want to raise your hand. You said, this is me. This is my business. So that's where third-party tools really help with campaign management or budget optimization. That These are going to be your best friends. So something like our cross-media optimization technology, this powers a couple of different solutions that we have to generate leads. So you're going across multiple solutions, moving budget to the ones that work the best. And this is what's going to bring in more leads and raise brands awareness. So you're, like I said, you're gonna move the platform or move your budget to the platforms with the best engagement, making every dollar count. And so that's why it's really important to use the tools that are available to you or to work with a partner because we know a lot of businesses are in this boat. Again, social media. If I had to pick two themes from this, it would probably be social um, and AI. So social media is gonna be very popular for small businesses. And in part, it's free and it's easy. 
most of us are very familiar with social. So we know that it's something that we can gravitate to and execute on pretty easily. But just remember, it may not always be the most effective. So if you are doing organic social marketing where you're just putting posts out on feeds, really consider investing some budget on social channels for ads for maybe better or more measurable results. Again, Facebook ads, typically we have found in our results have a significantly lower average cost per click and a lower cost per lead than Google ads. And it's a great way to be able to, like again, measure the results, to see what's working, see what isn't. Uh, and it may be a better place for your marketing budget. So here's an example of that data that I talked about. Facebook has lower and more stable costs year over year. We produce a Facebook ads benchmark report every single year, and we look at lead gen and traffic campaigns. And you can see this summary from lead gen campaigns year over year. The cost per cl the uh, click-through rate, sorry, decreased for 12 out of 15 industries. And so this is the opposite of what we saw for Google Ads, which saw increases in CTRs for most industries. This is just a, a compilation and an average. So despite this, overall average CTR across all of the industries did improve slightly. So while you should prioritize click-through rate for your business ads, just remember it may not be the most important metric for lead ads. Um, something else to think about is cost per click it increased for 12 out of the 15 industries that we looked at. So this follows a similar trend that we saw in our Google Ads benchmark, which is another report that we put out every year, where 86% of industries saw an increase in CPC. So it's still relatively low uh, for lead ads at $1.88 compared to $4.66 for Google Ads. So it's really important to look at all of the different opportunities and the pricing across the board you can see why Facebook would maybe get you a better return on the investment, but we don't recommend it do, going it alone on social. I think that social and search pair so well together and they're so complementary. And so it's a really good way to diversify your strategy and also continue to get the most out of your budget. All right, that was a ton of information. So. Let's try to wrap it up in just three main points. If we had to think about just three things that you had to take away from this, what would those be? Well, first, I would say invest where it counts. Find the areas where you need help or maybe the platforms where you're not appearing and invest to grow in those areas next year. That can be what triggers your 2025 planning. And then speaking of planning, plan ahead. Take time to plan out your digital marketing strategy now, and it will save you a ton of headache later. Whether that means you are planning out your social content or you're thinking through the platforms that you wanna utilize next year, being able to plan ahead is going to make for a much more efficient use of time, budget, and you're gonna see better results. And then third, we would just encourage you to try new things. Implement cross-channel strategies that track users across multiple platforms and devices. This creates a seamless customer journey for people. Also, being able to be on all year long. A lot of businesses are seasonal, so they'll only advertise during those times. But then you're losing that brand awareness that you can leverage when it is season, off season. So being able to think through that for your whole year. Where do you need to ramp up budget? And then where do maybe you need to decrease but still stay visible? All right, so now we're gonna start on what we call like our, our audio portion. This heads us into our Q&A. But before we get started on our Q&A, I wanna talk about what is on your screen now. So if you have heard a ton of information and maybe you wanna to talk to someone about what this means for your business or uh, your specific situation. If you are ready to do that, go ahead and click yes to that poll in front of you and you'll be able to have a free marketing assessment that's very much like a one-to-one -one, um, interaction and you'll be able to get a ton of answers to um, a lot of your questions. But so now take a break, sit back. We're gonna go into our Q&A portion. So, if you've attended our sessions in the past, this is a really unique opportunity. If you haven't entered your question into the question box, please go ahead and do so now. I'm gonna to try to take the last couple of minutes that we have and grab some of these questions 
because like I said, we went through a ton of information and it's a lot of data. And we will have the recording and the slides for you later on. But if you haven't had a chance, put your question in the question box and let's see what we have here. Okay, let's see. Uh, what's the best time to increase marketing for personal care products like skincare and makeup? So anytime you're looking at a vertical, like a very specific industry, and you're trying to figure out what to do and what that strategy is, we'd encourage you to do a couple of different things. So one is uh, research on what the trends and the benchmarks are for that industry. So things like our Facebook and Google Ads benchmarks are broken out by industry. So I would go and find your industry on there, see what the metrics are, see what the benchmarks are and what others in the space are doing, and then let that be your guide for any of the other strategies that you're going to execute. Okay, uh, asking, is it better to start something in the holiday season or postpone until after the new year? So I think timing, again, depends on your industry. The, the last quarter of the year is a huge, especially for retail, it's gonna be a big opportunity, but not all businesses are going to be like that. So if you have something brand new that you wanna introduce and you wanna see sales do really well, you know, maybe Christmas and the holiday season makes the most sense for you. And then you would just wanna examine your budget in light of that. Do you, maybe you wanna increase your efforts somewhere. Maybe you need more brand awareness during this time and less uh, leak because you have something that you're planning to do at the beginning of 2025. And so all of that goes into the factors of what decisions you need to make and what the planning looks like and timing for that. And then another great thing uh, or tool is when you're looking at timing of planning out your year, looking at your seasonality, like our template that we talked about with social, where are your customers the most engaged with your profiles? Where are they, where are you seeing the most activity? And then you can be sure to show up in those spaces at those times and then meet them where they are. All right, let's see. All right, so I see a couple of questions around vertical specific and expertise. And so I want to go ahead and clarify that the respondents of the survey, they represent, some of them are active customers of local IQ, but really they represent the companies at large, more than 730 businesses across the US and Canada, and then those slivers of other countries that responded. So if you're looking for a, a partner or someone that is specific in different industries, I would encourage you to speak to someone, answer yes to that poll, because we have run millions of campaigns across multiple verticals. This survey is just a really good uh, segmentation of what survey respondents in the wild, I like to say, we're experiencing. So if you wanna look at your competitors and understand what they're doing for their marketing, this is a really good resource for that. If you're looking for expertise on your marketing, that's when you wanna get one-to-one -one with somebody, answer yes to the poll, and they'll be able to talk to you about campaign specifics, what makes sense for your industry. We have uh, the highest tenure around here. So we have people who've been doing this for a really long time. All right. All right, I'll go ahead and take one more question and then we'll be able to go ahead and close it up for the day. So someone asked about SEO versus SEM results. So a lot of times SEO is more of a longer game because you're building up that reputation over time. But it really depends, again, on your industry and your business and then what sort of SEM you're doing. Because you may have campaigns set up in a way that you may not get the results as quickly as you would with maybe some sort of SEO effort. And so that's where it comes in handy to be able to do a SWAL analysis or um, an assessment or maybe talk to an expert about your business to understand what you're doing. But traditionally, that's the timeline that we usually experience. Okay, I see a bunch of questions coming in. If I wasn't able to get to yours today, please click yes to that poll. Be able to speak to someone one-to-one -to -one about your business and the specifics of your business. Uh, and then we hope to see you again on our next webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today.